Friday's Vernon's News this Friday, 10th of February, with me, Terry. Scholarships. Last week, we celebrated our pupils getting scholarships. Congratulations to Daisy, Louis, Freya, Chloe and Molly, who all gained a scholarship exhibition or award to Sutton Balance. Breaking news. Rafe has just gained a music scholarship to King's Canterbury and Zach, a DT exhibition, also to King's. Congratulations to you all. Sports. Another inspirational run by all the year groups who were desperately trying to catch the year fives. The year threes made the most progress of all with an additional 24 kilometres from the previous week. So a big congratulations to them. Still in the lead by 30 kilometres and looking like they will get to the finish line before half term break are those year fives on 971 kilometres and approaching the Welsh border at Hertford. Can they keep up this impressive lead? Only time will tell. Netball. The senior girls had a brilliant end to their netball season with four wins, a draw and only one loss against Benenden. The firsts were delighted to clinch victory by goal 18-17, following a loss to Benenden at the start of the season. The under 11 and under 10 girls also won five out of five matches against Marlborough House School. Some breaking news from the under 13 Kent netball tournament yesterday. Congratulations to the under 13 first netball team who had a fantastic day at the under 13 Kent tournament. 33 teams attended from all over Kent, mainly senior schools, and we played eight tough matches in our group, winning six, drawing one, and only losing one. This placed us second in the group stage behind Seven Oaks. And through to the quarterfinals, we managed a win against Cranbrook to progress into the semi-finals where we met Seven Oaks once again. Despite our best efforts, Seven Oaks took the win and went on to win the final two. We met Walthamstow Hall in the third, fourth playoffs. Nail biting end to end netball resulted in four all draw at full time. During extra time, two minutes each way, we weren't quite able to convert our chances and the win slipped away. However, to finish in the top four of the 33 schools that entered is an amazing achievement and we couldn't be prouder of the girls. Roll on the IAPS after term. Maths. Well done to our Shell Maths team who came third out of 16 teams in the Mayfield Primary Maths Challenge at Mayfield School. Rory, Elodie, William and Felicity were up against some stiff competition and were pipped to the post by the Granville School from Seven Oaks. A fun day out was had by all. Go Team St. Ronan's! Music. An excitement builds for this Friday's house shout. Wilf from Year 3 was given the highly important task of deciding the performing order by picking the house names out of a jazz band photo. Good luck to all the houses this afternoon. <coughs> Blind Date with a Book Blind Date with a Book will be running during our book week, Monday 27th of Feb to the 3rd of March. More information can be found in the library. Books need to be wrapped, this can be done in the library, and dropped off to the library with completed book sheets stuck on. Please, can anyone donate a book that is in great condition? They have read and would like another classmate to enjoy. This is taking place instead of our usual book fair. The aim is to encourage thinking of others and the environment. We all have lovely books that we have read once and probably won't read again. Books can be dropped off in the library from now until Friday 24th of February. Pupils will get to pick a book from the Blind Date Bookshop during an English lesson to take home and keep. If you bring in five good books, you can earn a show. We've had some lovely ones already. Grounds news. John and the team are moving bird's nests around the school. Terry, other Terry, popped out to see what they were up to. Good afternoon, John. How are you? Hello, Terry. I'm very well, thank you. And where are we today and what are we doing? We are at Monkey Town and we're actually uh, moving some nest boxes around. Um, we probably should have done this in the autumn, but each year, after the birds have finished in the nest boxes, we clean them out um, and we tend to reposition some if they don't seem to be in the best places or they haven't been used. They usually are, but we're actually positioning a couple on these classrooms so, so they're a bit more visual for the children to see as they go about their, their daily school life on the walkway here. Hopefully they'll see birds flitting to and fro and in and out of the boxes. But when we clean them out, it's actually quite interesting because it gives us a chance, if I hold that down, to have a look at the nests that come out. Okay. And most of our boxes are, are blue tits and great tits mainly, they're going to get useful. Which tend to have one, which have just one brood a year. They tend to have quite a large brood. Um, 
And inevitably they don't all make it young, which is part of the survival strategy why the parents lay so many eggs. Um, so when we take the old nests out and look at them, we often find sort of a, a selection of things really. Some of these boxes have got a number of young, of, of young dead young birds in, sometimes remains of eggs. But even from this nest, it's, it's highly probable six, maybe eight young may well have fledged, which is pretty good. But it's always interesting to look at what the nests are made of. So if we see here, we've got what, are, what appears to be chicken feathers. Uh, they tend to find any materials they can around the site. So we've got some sort of plastic, some sort of plastic rubbish here. I'm not sure quite what that is, a string or a rope. Actually, I think it's a coloured feather. So perhaps that's from our art department, I'm not sure. Could be. But we also tend to find, funnily enough, there's often some luminous yellow in there, which I think is the remains of old tennis balls. So where tennis balls <laughs> get lost in the hedges and around the edges, the birds find them as they start to break down and they'll pull them apart and use them to, put, to make the nest with. But there's also lots of soft stuff. So there's any old wool and feathers and lots of hair from our animals. So if we look around, we could probably find both donkey hair and goat hair in amongst here. There'll be a little bit of sheep wool here and there. So it's quite interesting to look at what's, what's been going on really. So if a bird come to reuse one of these nests, would it not be deterred by the smell of a previous bird? They would build a new nest on the top okay. because the boxes are deep enough. But ideally we remove this because all this old nesting material is likely to be home to, to sort of parasites. So fleas, mites, lice, that sort of thing, which if there are too many, it'll put quite a burden on the young birds in the nest and, and might reduce their chances of making it out the nest. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's good practice to clean them out each year. Very, very really? interesting. Now, I've, I think I'm hopefully, I'm not sure if I've got the shot in, the bird box going up. So there we are. So your team have put that up there whilst I was chatting to you. I think I was focusing on the nest okay. at the time. But so has this a, is this a camera one or is this just a, no, a, an empty one? A, no, it's just a, uh, it's a wood creep type box, which are, which are very good, very durable. They last a long, long time. Um, but that one's... That one's got a large enough entrance to hold. It's most likely to be used by great tits. We get, we get lots of numbers of those around here. Um, so that's the most likely thing. Fantastic. Thank you very much, John. Thank you for your time. Thank okay. you to your team. I'm getting used to this new camera. I do apologize. Okay. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Pre prep. It's been an exciting week for the reception classes. Not only was it book week, but they also have put 17 duck eggs into the incubator. This year, they hope to be mother ducks in 28-ish days. The IT department are already thinking of placing a webcam nearby to capture the hatching. Farm news. Piglets get their first outing and more. Here are some shorts from Debbie. Here's hoping my piglet barrier works. lovely sunny day so the piglets have decided to have a little mooch around stretch their legs and there's mummy Ivenka headed off into the distance <laughs> away from them Here they are. Lyra's fun fact of the day gummy bears were originally called dancing bears hmm. today is international Louis day if you are called Louis, say hi. Yes! It is also an international winter bike to work day. If you are on a bike, say hi. Yay! It is also international teddy bear day. If you are a teddy bear, say hi. Well, we apologize for this breaking transmission and are looking into getting Lyra back as soon as possible. It does, however, allow me to update you on some breaking news we heard today 
from our senior sports correspondent, Mrs. Hinchliffe, the Year 4 girls made St. Ronan's history this week, kicking off in the school's first competitive girls football match. Away to Dulwich, we split into four five-a-side teams and played matches on rotation. Our budding Lionesses produced some promising football, coming away with seven wins, a draw and two losses. Not bad for only after two training sessions. The start of an exciting new chapter for the girls. Here's to a great season. Well done. And from our junior sports correspondent, Mr. Kanzig, we had a special visitor at the run this week. The children really enjoyed running with Mr. TV. Although one did say to Mr. Fox, I thought it was going to be Usain Bolt. Mr. Fox said we could get him in when we are doing the sprint work, but Mr. TV was much more accomplished over longer distances. He seemed very happy with that answer. Congratulations to the Year 5 team who were the winners of this half terms challenge. After half term, another challenge begins in Tongswood. Good luck and please make sure you have your football, rugby or running shoes for this. And as I'm told we can go back to the studio, there is just time to let you know that our Year 3 reporter, Miss Squires, has had a quick update too. Class 3 had a wonderful Roman week this week. Not only did we have lots of fun, we learnt loads too. Thank you to Living History for making the day so magical for us. Now I do believe our technical team has resolved the issue and I think we can now join Lyra back in St. Ronan's school studio. Have a great half term and we will see you soon. Terry, out. Are you supposed to be me then, Lyra? Cool. <laughs> Thanks very much, thank you.